Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 312 of the MTG Goldfish podcast. I'm Seth, probably better known as Seth Fred Olive, and we have the full crew here this week, kicking things off with the owner of MTG Goldfish, Richard. How's it going this Monday, Richard? Hey, Seth. Doing well. Getting more Caldime cards. Almost to the <laughs> literally, end. Literally, like, as we speak, we're sitting down for the podcast, and then someone will message and be like, hey, there's a new mythic. So, yeah, we're, we're still getting Caldime spoilers, and that's going to be our main and perhaps only topic of this podcast. We're just going to be talking new Caldime stuff. But before we get to that, we have another co-host in Krim. How are you today, Grim? Uh, extremely excited, actually. Uh, Caldime finally uh, hit, dropped some cards for me that got me pretty excited for the set. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm sure we will hear about those cards as we uh, as we go along, because that is the primary topic of our podcast. Caldheim spoilers, new magic cards. I don't know if we have extra time at the end. Maybe we'll sneak in some fish mail. If not, we'll get to it next week when spoilers are wrapped up. I think spoiler season might be over with after tomorrow, but I'm not 100 percent sure. That's the last day that uh, is listed on the schedule. But there's also commander decks for this uh, set. That, right and we haven't seen other than the two face legends we haven't seen any commander stuff so i don't know we'll see spoiler season you never know these days we get surprise spoilers once in a while but today all caldheim new magic cards but before we get into it a reminder that today's show is brought to you by card conduit and if you've ever had to deal with the hassle of selling your magic cards it is a lot of work a lot of typing and sorting and shipping well card conduit they are the easiest way to sell your cards and if you want to avoid all those hassles in all that time which i would recommend especially if you've never done it before jesus a lot of work well uh, this new service from the folks over at card hoarder will sort grade and sell your magic cards for you and once your shipment is processed you'll get the proceeds minus their fee and right now you can get a 10 percent discount by going to cardconduit.com slash goldfish so thank you so much to card conduit for supporting the show today and with our sponsorship stuff out of the way. Richard, I guess uh, guide us through some cow time spoilers. We got a ton of sweet cards to talk about, so Richard, take it away. Alright, let us start off with, in my opinion, the card that changes everything. <laughs> Doom Scar. <laughs> Three white, white, sorcery, it's a rare, destroy all creatures, foretell for one white, white. So three to foretell, uh, and remember to foretell, you pay two and you put it face down. And then later on, on a later turn, uh, you can pay its foretell cost to flip it up and cast it. So effective three mana wrath here, uh, five mana if you cast it uh, in its entirety. And we were talking before the cast. I think this ruins Tarmogoyf, guys. No. <laughs> this is it. This is it. The power creep. <laughs> Finally over. It's, it's over. Everything needs to be an Uro now, right? This is too efficient. And in order for magic to be somewhat balanced, the creatures all need to look like Uro. And we know how that turns out. So I dislike this card. We do not need hyper-efficient rats and removal because that's just an arms race with crazy creatures and lowly you know, two mana four fives. Don't pass the test, right? <laughs> two mana four five, what's that? Does it draw a card, cycle, put a land into play, kill my opponent? Not good enough, right? So ah, I just too much too much power here. Too much power. I, I, I would like to say that Richard might be overreacting to how good. <laughs> I've been burying Tarmac every set, Krim. Leave me alone. This, this is this is not we were Seth and I were trying to tell Richard this is not what made Tarmogoyf unplayable. Tarmogoyf has been undone quite a while ago. <laughs> but yeah, Tarm oh. Tarmogoyf has a lot of a lot of problems these days. I mean, does this make Tarmogoyf better? No, but I don't think this was uh, <laughs> the card that made Tarmogoyf better. This justifies Uro, and no, I don't like things not. that justify it Uro. Not. It does this not justifies just Oko, right? Like, why How? play creatures? They just get rats. <laughs> just play planeswalkers, right? Like, this justifies all the bad things we've been seeing, right? Like, to play into these hyper efficient movements, you need to play cards like Golos. Right, you need to play Field of the Dead. You need to play these stupid broken cards just to deal with this. So I, I just, yeah. <laughs> I, 
I think that escalated very quickly. <laughs> it went from, hold on, board wipe? Oko, unban it. Get all these cards off the fan list. We're ready for it again. No, that's not, that's not what this means at all. This is the first shot we have at... Because you got to remember, the creatures have gotten so good and so efficient that, like, so what? It's What are they going to do? They're just going to play another set of creatures, right, that are all equally as good as the previous ones. And, and they all do something immediately, so they all get value. So really, this board wipe, when you think about it, it's like how, you know, like, it kind of balances out with you know like love struck beasts and stuff like that yeah that's that's kind of how i see it too is like it feels like there's been a ton of power creep in the last couple years but most of the power creep or almost all of it really has been concentrated on threats rather than answers so i kind of view doomscar is it's very powerful i think you can make an argument it's the best white wrath since literal wrath of god 27 years ago in alpha like it's i think it's that good but i do think it's also like answers catching up a little bit with how good the threats have been uh and just how fast formats can be now I'm actually, I think, happy with that. I think, though, I'm also looking at this mostly from a perspective of non-standard formats. Like, in standard, I could see how this might annoy some people, and maybe people are not happy about having a three-mana Wrath around, but for formats like Modern or even Historic, I think this card is going to be a really big deal. I've kind of been thinking maybe, like, Toxic Deluge would be a card I'd want to see in something like Modern Horizons, just to have a faster hard sweeper, and I think that Doomscar, like, kind of fills that role and it does it in white and if we got ax- actual toxic deluge people would be pretty salty that like uh, white should be the you know the color in modern that has the best uh, best wrath going on so i think i like this card actually and i think it's really good i i don't okay so i i do think it's very good but there is that awkward situation that i know i'm gonna run into where i need it on four but i draw it like and i like you know what i mean so it's like well i can't foretell this so i'm dead <laughs> so yeah, i think it's, I, it's actually not that good in older formats because you don't want to take turn two off to do right. a turn three wrath and like usually if you need a wrath so desperately like a pyroclasm probably does it uh so i actually don't think it's it'll be that good in older formats and then the awkward crim situation where you need it on four and you can't do anything about it <laughs> Uh, So I actually don't think it's too relevant in older formats, but I do think it wrecks standard. And I think we agree, right? We agree that there's too much power creep in creatures. We just disagree on the solution. You guys think that the answers should catch up, but I I think that's just a race to the bottom. I I don't even think think this helps us catch up. I mean, I think it's like it's a step in the right direction, but I don't think it's like because like the value of most of the stuff has already happened by now, right? Like, But what if we just do it? Like, what if we just undo it? What if we don't need to print Questing Beast every set, right? We can just <laughs> we already print do. like have a four read man of four five. Cards? Okay. Have okay. you read Calum's Everything has like a textbook on the front. <laughs> so Not even mentioning the sagas. Pre- <laughs> I would prefer them to tone down Power Creep. Like if I thought there was a chance to be like, hey, wizard, stop printing Questing Beasts and, you know, Uros and so forth, and that they would actually do it, then sure that's fine then we don't need doomscar and that would probably be an ideal solution i just think the cat's out of the bag and wizards really likes that broken cards with lots of text can sell lots of packs and eat up lots of wild cards on magic arena (laughs) so i don't know if that's actually a solution that wizards would be on board with so if wizards is dedicated to printing like busted threats i think we gotta have busted answers would i I prefer if we toned everything down yes i think not power creeping aggressively would be better but from where we're at now i'll take my three mana rafts and maybe not die to love struck beast and questing beast uh, immediately every game uh, as a jun player let me explain oh yeah go ahead go ahead (laughs) this is what's gonna happen right The, the threats are too busted the answers are too busted Right? You guys accomplish nothing playing fair magic. The answer is to play unfair magic. Like, this is where it all leads, right? Like, I can't play a creature because everything gets wrathed away, right? And you're like, I can't wrath creatures because all their creatures, like, have eight abilities and keep coming back. I will just ignore what you're doing all together and just play solitaire and combo off. Like, that's what it always devolves into when you have too much power creep, right? Isn't that the, what it's already become, though? I, I, yeah, so, so like, why... Keep furthering the cycle. I, I don't. don't I don't know if this <laughs> is further. This might actually steer it slightly back a little, not by much, because everything's still like, you know, like as I had mentioned, I feel like I'm gonna cast this 
and it's not going to change much. <laughs> like it's, it's not going to change uh, much because you're playing against an unfair combo deck. <laughs> I mean, right? you're, you're playing against like Golos and Field of the Dead. You're like, what is the point of this card? <laughs> I mean, at, at the same time, you might be slightly biased, Krim, as the person who just wants to like drown yard people out of the game or whatever. That's good, so, clean so magic. Can... <laughs> That's honest magic. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I'm not surprised that you really love this card because as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, this this is one for Krim. Krim's gonna, Krim's gonna like this. <laughs> this one. is the card that I'm like, all right, I'm heralding into the new format, and every format just pinned to my face. <laughs> We we got him, boys. We got the answer. Now I just I need mean, an I, actual I actually, one mana Doom Blade. We we have a counter spell, right? So now you just like foretell on two and you sit on it, right? They commit only like a single scary threat, you counter it. Uh they commit multiple threats, you you wrath. Like I think it actually uh, works really well given the context of the set as well, right? There are other playable foretell cards. So you can actually you know, do you th it's not like, you know, when you play Den Protector, you're like, okay, we know there's only like one morph card in your deck and we know what it is, right? <laughs> like, in this case, you probably have playable foretell cards to play with it. So I think <laughs> it's, it actually makes it pretty it, good. It's, it's always Will Bender, Richard. We know that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Oh, Tarmogoyf, my friend. When can we? When, when, do you think? Do you think they can print Tarmogoyf in standard as a two mana four five? Do you think people would play it? It wouldn't be good. It, I, I legitimately don't think. Like I it's already, two mana four five. You don't need graveyard like stuff. I already just two thought mana, it four, wasn't five. good before. Like if it were printed like two years ago, I still thought it wasn't that great. Oh, just get stonewalled by love struck yeah. bees. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you would have to kill not only the love struck bees. It would get chumped. By the one one if it needed, so they could buy more That's, time. We we need we need a power creep goy for Richard. Like you get plus two plus two for Uro. each card type it's in the graveyard. Uro. That is power creep Tarmogoy. Uro. You want that? You really want oh, that? No, no. I, I, I would prefer that Uro to be banned actually. We so need no, the two power creep. Have that. Two mana ten ten. That's it. This this is where I think R and D will has to like it has the toughest job because you don't ever want that miserably boring set like you know ixalan but you definitely don't want eldrain part two so yeah i don't know how yeah, you do uh, that where you walk balance. that line where it's still fun to play but uh, but you know like balanced do you guys not enjoy playing tarmogoyf i don't understand i i like tarmogoyf <laughs> i like Tar. i think i think tarmogoyf if that card is good in like formats like modern that's great but <sighs> I, I think the issue is more that it's like it's really hard to power stuff down but it, it's really easy to power stuff up and just keep creeping and creeping and creeping but then it's really painful to be like oh we're gonna print I mean there's some examples of some magic's history like masks was one where you had like absolutely busted Urza and then Mask was just like horrible and everyone hated it you have like Mirrodin in the Kamigawa you have Ixalan is another like pseudo example so it's really easy Dragon's to keep maze. the power creep going but it's actually really hard I think from Wizards perspective where they want to sell each set and have people excited about each set it's really painful to be like okay here's Ixalan that everyone hates and no one cares about and everyone's just like wow this set's so bad when do we get to the next set so I feel like it's much harder to power down power creep than power up which is kind of one of my concerns about where we're at right now but at the same time if you just keep power creeping eventually everything breaks right there's got to be some point where we're just we, like we it's actually not fun become anymore. Yu -Gi -Oh. like legitimately the, this this if anyone has played Yu-Gi-Oh semi-competitively you'll already know that their way of dealing with power creep is by making the new card better all of them <laughs> that that's that I is mean, actually like the case like I I, I remember this because there's a card in Yu-Gi-Oh! Black Luster Soldier and Raigeki, and these cards were, like, it's a one-sided board wipe, right? Like, Raigeki, and that was taken off the ban list. You could have three of them, because it was too slow. It just wasn't good enough. So, <laughs> so eventually, Magic will just get to that point where maybe Oko and Uro were just, as I mentioned before in older podcasts, remember the good days? The good old days when Oko and Uro were the threats? That's gonna be a thing, and that, that could happen. That could happen, so, but I. So you think we'll get to the point Richard's saying, but you don't think Doomscar? Yeah, I don't think I don't puts think us there. It's the one that takes us there. If I, if Do, anything, Doomscar, Doomscar ensures is, we get there, right? No, That's the problem, not. right? <laughs> For the rest of Caldime's existence, you must have powerful creatures, right? So you just prolong like the the power creep, right? You can't roll back. Like if you go back to Tarmogoyce right now, like 
you would never do anything against a control deck, right? So you must keep making <laughs> questing beasts in strict saving, right? Otherwise, like the cards won't be played, right? So you just ensure that the cycle continues, right? I see, like I I guess, but you gotta look at the creatures nowadays too, right? Like it legitimately, I think some creatures on their own, just like think about it, Love Struck Beast, a one one and a five five, just that one card is almost enough to force me to use a board wipe. Pretty much. So, but if because you, if you we got that, there because of fatal push, right? Like if you just wind it back <laughs> slowly, right? Like when you get hyper efficient removal, and then you had these planeswalkers that are crazy. Like basically, we have one card win cons, so our answers need to be like super efficient now, right? But I'd rather just not print questing beast and love struck beast. I mean, I, I I agree. Escalate with that. it, right? But but I think if you want to, if if this were like a four mana planar cleansing, then let's talk, right? But it is. It is just it's, to me. It's just medium. <laughs> strict saving, Krim. We'll be gonna clip this. It is strict saving. We're time. gonna have like a four mana. There'll be some like faux downside. Like you gotta you gotta like mill the top card of the library. <laughs> right? <laughs> if you can't if you can't exile one card in your graveyard, <laughs> this costs one more mana. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, like uh, the, the, yeah. We, we gotta move on though, because if not, we're, this is gonna go. This I feel like this card on yes, its own will this, have a podcast. This is the Doom's card, guys. Yep. <laughs> this, this is this is Doom's card. Okay, wait, wait, wait. One more meta point since you guys both brought it up, and it's really interesting, right? Speaking of power creep, what do you guys think about complexity creep? Right, like the gods have two sides, like each side has like two, three abilities. So like each card has like five abilities now. Same with sagas, right? Like three abilities on a card. Like every card is just a textbook, right? <laughs> of things it can do. <laughs> cool. Personally, I really like it. I, I like complex magic. I, I think like Time Spiral is one of my like favorite blocks uh, in all of magic's history. I really like it. I do have a bit of a concern about new players and maybe because I think that was always a concern about cards being too uh, complex is like is it too much for new players but maybe you know arena is the main place new players are like learning these cards and arena just kind of guides you through it more or less maybe it's fine uh, but for me personally i i like the the high complexity cards i, I don't like the power creep if, if all the words are leading to power creep then that's probably not a positive but if it's just like Complexed, uh, I'm down with that. I, I remember when I was streaming Hearthstone and the H word, and before, or like it was Arena had just come out, right? And I was like, oh, well, there's finally a streamable magic, you know, you are a client. I had a Nico Bolas God Pharaoh in my hand and on board. Everybody coming from a different card game or any new game was extremely intimidated and put off by that. Like, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to play a game where there's like, like a textbook on the front of every card. Now imagine if there's two sides to the card. And there's a textbook on both sides of the card. Like, you know, like that, that I, I am a little bit concerned from a new player's perspective. However, I do like, you know, the complexity of it. I do. This is leaning in the direction now where I, how I had mentioned before, the main reasons why I liked, you know, companions and all this other stuff, maybe not the companions we got, but the idea behind them is that we always have something to do. And there's less, you know, like the, I, I like that. I like that I have something to do. Whether I'm now, if I'm if I'm flooded, well, that's fine because I can just look to the backside of this land and it's something else. I can look to the backside of this spell, this card, and it's something else. So there's always something to do now. And the more of that we get, the more I think it's it's enjoyable because then it makes it so that there's way more decision trees within a game. And MDF season specific. They're really just split cards, right? Yeah. Except with two faces, you can put more text on them. But we've kind of had two cards in one for a long time. Right. Just, but except just, just wait till we get to the artless cards. Because right now what's restricting <laughs> us is the art, right? The the, yeah. the the frame can only fit so much text. But we go artless, <laughs> you can get like six-way modal, man. <laughs> six-way yeah. modal and two sides. You can have a whole deck in one card. Ne next year, <laughs> we're going to have to start four QR of the coding. same card to combo off. We're going to just start using QR codes. We're just going to scan the cards and bring up a database oh, or something like Ur that. Urza's head or whatever, right? From uh, the unsets. The yeah, great. <laughs> All right. Back on topic. We, we totally just went off the rails here. So to our second spoiler cards after 20 minutes, we have Virgi, <laughs> God of Storytelling. It's our favorite. It's a legendary god. Uh, it's a rare. It's 
three CMC, two and a red. It's a three, three. Whenever you cast a spell, add red. Until the end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. Creatures you control can boast twice during each of your turns rather than once. The other side is Harnful, the Horn of Bounty, five CMC legendary artifact. Discard a card, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn. Oh, this card's so good. I, I really like this card. I think it, it's a little bit like Goblin Electromancer or like Brawl in a weird way, uh, where you can kind of pseudo storm off. The first thing I thought of was the Meemkin deck, where you use like Runaway Steamkin with one mana red cantrips to kind of make those cantrips free. Burgie does the same thing. And the backside, five mana is a lot, but good lord that card is so busted like that is a ridiculous amount of card advantage you do gotta build around it a little bit but i'm picturing like you have that down and you cast like an opt or something from under the horn which is going to get you a card in your hand which you discard so suddenly all of your ops or serum visions or crash throughs are drawing you two cards instead of one which is really really powerful the bow stacks i think that's just for limited i would be surprised who maybe there's a bow stack in standard but i'm really looking at this as like a sweet pseudo storm style enabler with the backside being in a crazy card advantage if you draw two you have the mana and the card advantage and you, you should just win the game like if you have two of the, uh, both sides on the battlefield i mean yeah i i i have no idea what <laughs> this will do when it when it comes to formats outside of standard this this seems kind of like do i really i mean this it's a modal card but do you see storm playing this Oh, I don't, I don't think, like, actual Modern Storm will play it, because you already have Brawl, and the backside's right. a little expensive, so I, I don't think it's... It works like a Storm card. I'm actually personally more excited about it in formats like Historic, or maybe uh, Pioneer, potentially, where I think you can do some uh, some fun Storm-esque shenanigans, but I don't think, like, tier Modern Storm will play this, because it's kind of essentially just, like, Brawl that costs one more mana. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't actually think this card has a home anywhere. Wait, it's like past the, like the, the backside is a past in flames, right? But it's just more expensive and less versatile, right? The front side is bad brawl. So yeah, you probably wouldn't play it in modern, but I don't know. Like that backside is pretty powerful though, but you have to actually cast this. I mean, and you got oh, the backside's historic, insane. It's, a, it's an artifact, right? So the issue is like in the backside where everyone is like also like, if there's red, you know, that opponent's probably main decking like a braid, right? So I guess. I don't know. I, I just feel like this card, maybe I missed the mark on this and I'm willing to claim it now. And uh, But I think this doesn't have a home anywhere as of right now in any uh, in like any format on Arena. So I don't see it having a home in Standard. I don't see it having a home in Historic. I think uh, Spellslinger Commander decks also seems like, if you're playing like Kaika or anything yeah. like that, this seems like a, a sweet addition to that. What do you think about the art? One thing that was, if you look at the showcase version and the normal version, something that was brought up on Twitter is how different Burgie looks between uh, the two the two arts. What do you think about that? I don't actually know what the normal art looks like. I only know the showcase art. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so I actually have not seen the normal what? art. I mean, is it just the point of showcase? Like, do are, do other showcase cards look like the normal cards? Is this? I don't know. Is it supposed to look like the same character? I don't know. I actually don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know about that either. Hmm. Yeah. Eh. I mean, I guess I personally, I'm kind of like whatever, but I just saw people uh, <laughs> commenting about it on Twitter when I tweeted about the card. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even think I've seen the normal artwork, so I only know the showcase artwork. All right. Moving on. We have Tyvar Kell. Two green green, three starting loyalty, legendary planeswalker Tyvar. Elves you control have tap, add black. Put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target. Elf untap it. It gains death touch until end of turn. Zero, create a one one green elf warrior creature token. Minus six, you get an emblem. Whenever you cast an elf spell, it gains haste until end of turn and you draw two cards. This is my favorite kind of Planeswalker, which is, I think Tyvar is really powerful. Like, uh, very, very strong. But you gotta be playing elves to actually take advantage of it. So I like Planeswalkers that 
are pushed and powerful, but are also narrow and can't go in every deck like Teferi or Oko or some of those Planeswalkers, which is just like any generic deck you take advantage of in an elf deck. I don't think this makes it to modern. I think it's too slow for modern, but I think if standard elves are a thing, Tyvar almost certainly would be a part of it. And I think like historic elves would probably consider some number two. The ultimate is just absolutely absurd. If you actually manage to ultimate this and you're playing an elf deck with Lattawar elves and elvish mystics and all that stuff, you should just be able to like double glimpse of nature plus haste. So you have mana from all your mana elves to basically just go infinite and play through your entire deck. And even without that, on tapping an elf, we have like arch druids and so forth around, incubation druids that are tapping for multiple mana. That's really good. Making elves in a deck that's full of elf lords, never a bad thing. So I think this is really strong, but you got to be elves to take advantage of it at all. Do you think historic elves finally has what it needs to fight the goblins? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> this is like Muxus, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, basically Muxus. it's basically Muxus. Right, pretty, right. pretty close. It's like Muxus <laughs> over like five turns, I think. Right, I do think. My, my experience with elves in historic has been their biggest issue is they're just so bad at recovering from removal. There's no shaman. Like that's in been the pack. my. That, that's been my thing. There's no shaman in the pack. Yeah. So like I, I do think. Uh, this is a good recovery card, though, for the most part. This is something that survives, like, a Wrath. <laughs> Even a three-mana Wrath. <laughs> so this is something that elves will still have around post-Wrath, which I think is a big deal for historic elves. Is it going to be good enough to actually, like, race goblins? Eh, I don't know about that. Like, I, I, want to, I want to see elves, right, like, get played, but there's just no reason to, right? Like you had mentioned, there's no Azuri to make sure that you have all that excess mana so you could survive a board wipe. And then on top of that, you're just not as fast as goblins. So, I don't know. I mean, like, I hope elves gets played somewhere because now we've got a lot of sweet new elf support. And I, I think this card is is very is very interesting. I mean, I I I've seen a green planeswalker before that has a passive that helps with adding mana. <laughs> uh, and, and I remember my I, like I saw this on my I twitched a little bit, but I think that's just because of you know certain past five mana green elves named Nissa who shake the world, but. I don't think this is on the same level. It's obviously not because it doesn't double your mana, but it does look like it could be good, right? I mean, I I, I don't think it plays it gets played in modern, but it could be good in standard. I'm confused. Isn't this bad? <laughs> like, I, I, I don't I don't understand why you guys think it's good. Whoa. Like your elves don't need the passive; they already make mana. The plus one is put a one one counter on something, and you get an extra mana. Like again, you're playing elves; you're not bottlenecked on mana. And the zero is make an elf, which is fine, but that's like four mana make an elf. That's not something to write home about. And I mean, if you ultimate, then yeah, you would. But who doesn't do that? Yeah. So I'm not exactly sure about like. But it's just bad Gideon, right? Like not even Gideon, right? But, like but I don't know, right? Three this because they are all you, you like you had mentioned, right? Everything makes elves already or makes mana. So you play a mana dork on one or two, and then you turn three this. But then I also, uh, it's also <laughs> kind of, kind of, I see it as like a free spell with like Archdruid or Morrowind, where you're like tapping your Archdruid, you play this, immediately untap your Archdruid, and you get to keep going to town. Uh, so I, I don't know. I think it's actually very strong in an elf deck. Non modern. No? I, 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 I have no idea. Modern is <laughs> yeah. just a little I, I, expensive. If my slow. modern opponent played this, they're, they're, they're just flexing on me because they're just like <laughs> playing I mean, a four have drop that does not. Have you seen how buff Yeah, they are flexing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I don't know. I feel like this is not what elves needs, right? Elves would need either like a shaman of the pack or a finisher at the top of the curve, right? Like you're, you're spending all this time ramping. So you need to combo finish with something and, and making we, more we elves. Gotta, but this doesn't. is what you would sideboard into, right? Like, let's say if you're in, like, historic, best of three, you know, you're up against blue-white or something. If you can stick this, you just keep making elves every turn. And we did yeah. get Shaman of the, uh, Shaman of the Pack. What? In Skemfar Shadow Sage. It's it's four mana instead of three, but that is, it is Shaman of the Pack. What? That can also gain oh, you life. You oh, get, did you miss you that you one? You get it off Coco, though. It's four four mana, yeah. No. The Coco missing Coco yeah, no, no, no. does does power it down. <laughs> but for but standard for standard elves, 
it's like a it's like a bad elf Gary or something almost. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you don't get three mana wrath with your four. Yeah. Mana. You, you guys think you have elves on the battlefield? <laughs> You'll have one elf from your planeswalker after you get three mana wrath. <laughs> Uh, but the four mana planar cleansing that's coming will take care of this. So. <laughs> <laughs> Until then, this is okay. Uh, okay, next planeswalker. Nico Eris, X, white, blue, blue. Legendary planeswalker Nico. When Nico enters the battlefield, create X shard tokens. Their enchantments with two sacrifices enchantment. Scry one, then draw a card. Uh, plus one, up to one target creature you control can't be blocked this turn. Whenever that creature deals damage this turn, return it to its owner's hand. Minus one, Nico Eris deals two damage to target tapped creature for each card you've drawn this turn. Minus one, create a shard token. Three starting loyalty. I think this card, like look, there's another Nico I like. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously <laughs> going to have to try this Nico, right? But I don't know if this is a player immediately, but I do think this card is a player down the line uh, because this seems pretty sweet in some kind of tempo deck, right? Or, or like, you know, kind of some kind of like flashy blue white deck. Cause the, I mean, I, I thought about it like, well, how good would this be in a control deck? And it, it's not very good. I don't, I don't think it's very good at all. Cause that plus one doesn't do anything. Uh, you want to be able to like return your Skyclave apparition or something like that. So you'll want to have creatures, right? So you'll like a Yorion deck could play this maybe. Because you have creatures to bounce back and get value off that, um, you know, and like we, we, what is it? The 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 card, the the thingy, the 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 giant slayer, the one that it, it's a it's a fairy tale card. It can it can blow up a creature, oh. giant killer or something like that. Yeah, so, something like that. Yeah. It might be giant. Yeah, killer. that I know from Eldraine. So that thing, yep. you know, like you can tap stuff down, so you can kind of get extra cute with the, uh, you know, like that. <laughs> if you wanted to, if you really wanted to go like <laughs> hardcore and getting some value out of Nico Eris, but I think whatever deck that is going to fully utilize this, it, it's going to come off that plus one, uh, that plus one being able to like give you back something. Yeah, you get your gods back, right? Yeah. It's important for this set. You can get your god back and then use the equipment half of it. Yeah. If you feel like. Or or reuse a Skyclave apparition, as I had mentioned, or anything along those lines. I I think you guys are underrating this card. I think Nico Eris is really strong. Like to me, this reads like Planeswalker Tireless Tracker. Like whatever. Plus one, sure, whatever. Negative one, whatever. I just want to make a bunch of shard tokens. Like just play this on turn four with X being one to get a shard and then immediately make a shard. You do the same like tireless tracker tricks. And if it gets to the late game and you peel this off the top when you're empty handed, then you just dump all your mana into it, make a ton of shard tokens. And, and, and that's just counting that we have constellation in standard. And we have things that care about artifacts entering the battlefield. That's a way you play your archon or whatever, or enchantments rather. Yeah. 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 Enchantments center. You play your archon or whatever. And then just cast this and you have a whole bunch of tokens entering the battlefield that are enchantments to trigger all your consolation stuff. I don't really care too much about the plus one and the negative one's kind of just okay to me. But I think even discounting that, just the shard token synergies, I think can be really powerful. I see that, that's that's what I mean though. Like I, I think the card is good if it finds the home that can like that has the Archon or whatever. But for right now, I feel like there's just not enough yet. <sighs> The shards, though. The shards are so good. Hey, I don't I know how I feel modern. about this card. Wait, what? You'd play, there's no way you'd play this in modern. You play Tireless Tracker in you, modern. You, no, you Why don't. Why would you yeah, play the Planeswalker <laughs> Tireless Tracker in modern? Because this isn't Tireless Tracker. <laughs> tireless Tracker does a lot, right? Like It's, it's, a, it's better. It, you get to scry one with your clues. It's like strictly better clues. It, <laughs> it finishes the game. It's a threat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, wait, we're not trying to logs it for you to get comboed out. <laughs> We're not trying to win, Richard. We're trying to draw cards here. Oh, oh. Come on, now. You just play Spaces Revelation. You could just cut, like, half the cost here. And just... <laughs> mm, I don't know how I feel about this card. I, I I think I think it'll be played as a tempo card. Maybe. Like, I, like if you're just playing a control deck, would you just throw this in? No, I would not. This feels like it's I, very expensive for drawing cards. Yeah. I feel like I would, but Krim is more the control... The control player. Yeah, I, I, if you were to ask me if I was going to put this in a control deck, I wouldn't. Not yet, at least. I mean, may, 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 right. maybe I, there's something uh, really good that I can, like, we're, we're talking about pure control, right? Like, we're talking, like, land go, counter your stuff. Yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't put that in there. If you're talking about, like, blue-white control where it's, like, tap out with Yorion, Skyclave, Apparition, all that other stuff, th- there's potentially a home there. 
because you don't mind bouncing a Yorion back. I okay, I'm gonna say I think this is one of the one of the best cards from the entire set, Whoa. and I think it's a sleeper. And I think when we look back and we do our review, maybe you all be laughing at me, but I think y'all are sleeping on this card. And once we start oh. playing with Cal Time, it's gonna be like top five, maybe even higher card from the set. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I mean, you know, all right. it, it's the no circle, circle of loyalty. Of loyalty so. has been thrown down. <laughs> we we give it the circle of loyalty stamp of approval. <laughs> Seth, no, no, Seth gives it the circle of loyalty stamp yes, of approval. Yes, I, I do, I do. You can hold me to it when we do our review. You can hold me to it. I think it's really good and a sleeper and right. one of the then, better then cards. I, in then the I set. give you a you be tripping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, actually, I don't know about this card. I, I, I'm. I don't know. It's like too weird. We could have to play with it, but I, I don't. I don't really know. <sighs> All right, Redane. Redane, Rydane, <laughs> I don't know. God of the Worthy. All four two and a white. It's a two three legendary creature god. Flying Vigilance. Snow lands your opponent's control. Enter the battlefield tapped. Non creature spells your opponent's cast with converted mana cost four or greater. Cost two more to cast. Flip side is Valkmira Protector Shield. Three and a white. Legendary artifact. If a source an opponent controls would deal damage to you or permanent you control, prevent one of that damage. Whenever you or another permanent you control becomes the target of an ability or spell an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless its controller pays one. I, I think this card right. is sweet, but I don't think it's the snow hate that we were talking about. <laughs> That that was my big question for both of you with this card is when this was spoiled, there was a big conversation on Twitter as to whether writing would be enough to make people stop playing snow for no reason in modern. And I kind of came down on the the no. Like I don't think it's modern playable enough. I wouldn't think twice about playing Snowlands because of this. But then a lot of people chimed in that are really good at magic and said they think maybe it is uh, so what do you think like if you're playing snow just for bluff value essentially in modern does the fact that this card exists make you switch back to normal basics like uh, should you not throw out your basic lands because of Rydane or is it not enough to actually uh, change anything I mean the decks that I was playing before only had like four basics and they were all snow so you shut off four of my basic lands in modern so that's that's about it. That's all you've done. And you and you got to have that in your deck too, <laughs> right? <laughs> you got you got to actually play it right in. Yeah, yeah. Like this creature is not good, right? Yeah, like, I, I don't. I don't think this is play this. Not, so, not like, modern. why would you fear? Like, let's say you're playing Death and Taxes or Coco deck. Would you really put this in your deck? Yeah. Like in, even sideboard is it even worth a sideboard slot. Is you're even if you're assuming you play against a lot of snow, would you even play this? What format? I mean, the thing is. You can in modern you have like uh Big Thalia, you have Archon of Amuria, which is actually in standard still, that just shuts down all non basics and mm -hmm. double hates on like fetch land for shock lands. It seems like this hits on whatever. 20% of your opponent's mana base, when if you play one of the non-basic uh, hate versions, then you're hitting on 80%. So I cannot really see a reason why I would ever consider playing this over other options that already exist in modern. I think it is a, a fine standard card. And I think the... CMC four greater restriction is actually kind of relevant if you're playing like white weenie or something making your opponent wait two turns to cast their wrath can often be the difference between like you getting your board swept and losing and you killing your opponent before they get to cast their wrath so I like it as a standard like white weenie slash hate bear card but I think it's pretty close to unplayable in modern main deck or sideboard I think it has so a home in historic um, it has a home in historic. I don't know about the snow part. I, I, I look at this card, card as flying vigilance, non-creature spells your opponent's cast, you know, that part. I skip the snow part. Cause I, <laughs> it doesn't, the snow part doesn't seem relevant. Like, what, like, like it, it, it is, it will be at some points. So I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna get burnt by that at some point, but like, I just don't think it does enough. Like, this isn't gonna make me think twice about going all snow. So the, the backside is just trash, right? This card is only one sided. Right? I mean, it are would we, be pretty are we cool concluding this? if you <laughs> it curves, right? You have multiples, so you go right right in into the Yalk Valk Mira or something like that, and it's like okay. Would you would you just keep it in hand for a backup right in rather than? Yeah, I, pro I probably this card. would. I honestly probably would. Like I, I don't know in many situations. Where okay. I, <laughs> so 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 this backside is useless. But going back to the front side, does does the tax work on Fortel? It does, right? If you foretell the wrath, you have to pay two more when you foretell it. You are casting it at that uh, point. Yes, you're casting yes. it, so yeah. yeah, you should. 
Yeah. So so you can turn it back to a five mana wrath. Right. And but then but you, it's but still then, just a three mana. T- like, would you? I'd rather just play a love struck beast. <laughs> like, no. like, what does this do? Right? Like, I don't know. This this, this is like too this is so too much little. Better. This is so much like I'm, in historic. Think about that. You have this and Thalia. You go Thalia into that. Oh yeah, yeah. In historic, as a hate card, right? Like, if you're playing a dedicated. Uh, like hate bear style deck, you could just like tack it on. But like in modern, I would just play the Teague. Oh right? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, like you have other things to be doing. Like the three mana two three is not especially relevant. If it was like a three mana four four, that you would just play <laughs> because it's good. <laughs> That's so then powerful. this incidental hate would like get more use, right? But as is, like I wouldn't want to play this unless. Like every deck is playing all snow and all spells for a greater, right? <laughs> I, like aside I, from that, it's just not worth the creature, right? Imagine being on a control deck and then you you get like your historic opponent Coco's into this. Like I I I will I would be pretty miserable. <laughs> like I, I won't lie to you. So I I do feel like the snow hate part matters for standard though. Like I don't think it matters for other formats, but if I don't have any snow cards in my deck in standard. I think I would play basic lands because I think this is playable enough that you could get wrecked by it in standard. In modern, I am not worried about the point zero 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 one percent chance that someone put this in their deck for some reason. So it wouldn't impact my deck building there. But in standard, I think it actually does sort of do its job as a snow hate card. So I don't know. This is, I have my issue with this, right? This is the one snow hate card that Wizard said would balance the format. <laughs> However, it's tacked onto like an underwhelming creature. So if White Weenie or some white based deck is the most popular deck in standard, then I agree this does its job of making you think twice about snow. But if a white deck is not prominent, like if a white deck is not good, like you wouldn't make your deck white just to add this, right? Like if you're playing mono red, you wouldn't be saying, oh, I should go borrow so I can add this card to hate on the snow, snow decks, right? So in that sense, I think it's not good and you know, one of five colors, you know, uh, I don't know. I just don't think this is going to be played in standard. And if it's not prominent, it's not going to do its job of making you think twice, right? Like, So I don't want people to think twice about playing snow cards. Like, if you want to, like, get people with Ascendant Spirit, like, go for it. That's awesome. What I don't like is people playing Snowlands just for, like, the bluff value or for no reason. And I think in standard, just the fact that someone could theoretically play this, and it's close enough to being standard playable... If you're playing mono red and you don't have any snow synergies, are you going to play snow basics or normal basics? I think because there's a chance that this could be played against you, I think you play normal basics, right? Mm-hmm. Or no? no? You still play the snow because you have a snow bolt, yeah. right? And then, I mean, if you have a snow card, snow bolt. If you have a snow card, then it matters. Then, then I guess that's true. Yeah. There, there's the thing here is I think a good amount of snow will be pouring into the format because now after looking at all the cards, there's enough things to where just having the snow basics. And the snow lands are are actually just all upside now. Now I believe that there's things that are warranted so that every deck should just have snow. And this card doesn't necessarily make me not want to play my snow stuff. So like like whatever I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have red because snowbolt is awesome. Is it really? I, I think that card is sweet. Why not? It hits everything I, that isn't a player, right? Yeah, but is it good if it's everything that isn't a player? I, it, I mean, <laughs> if yeah. it's a player, I'd be super hyped. But I don't kill people anyways with most of my decks, right? So like the thing is, I just <laughs> needed to die. Fair, 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 fair <laughs> enough. That's that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up we have Egan. Egan. You know Egon. what wizards should do? They should release a little guide with how to pronounce all these names they're releasing. Have, have you have you never watched have you never watched games of Game of Thrones, Richard? If you watch Game of Thrones, you can pronounce like half the cards in this set. Really? <laughs> is is this true? Egon. Egon I actually, I actually, Trigarian, yeah. I actually didn't watch Game of Thrones. No, there's a lot of Game of Thrones references and names in this set, including this one. <laughs> I I, wow. I I Seth Seth just did me in with a culture reference. Yeah, what is the I, 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 I'm, I'm not ready for that. I was not ready for that. I'm not ready for And he's pronouncing <laughs> words correctly. Oh no. Okay. Uh, God of Death, two and a black. So three out of six six. Oh, this is good already. Death touch at the beginning of your upkeep. Exile two cards from your graveyard. If you can't sacrifice, oh, what would you say it was Egan? Egan? Uh, e- Egon. It's yeah. Egon. 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 Egon yeah. And draw a card. Uh, backside is throne of death. A, a single black man. A legendary artifact at the beginning of your upkeep. Mill a card. Two in a black tap. Exile a creature card from your graveyard. Draw a card. That's a big three drop. Yeah. Like that, uh, I think the thing that surprised me about this card, and it kind of, 
I don't know, I guess makes sense in our current era of design. I would have thought this would have had a hard downside. Like for it a three does. mana six, six death touch, I thought it would be like, oh, if you can't do this, sacrifice it. It triome cycles. <laughs> like the downside <laughs> is it triome cycles, which is like, yeah, sure, you lose your six, six, but you get a new card out of the deal. So even if you have a ley line of the void against you and this will never be able to do anything, you can still just cycle it for three mana, which that was surprising to me. I feel like that takes away a huge chunk of the risk of playing this card. In the worst case, yeah, cycling for three is not exciting, but it's not going to be a dead card like some of the it's past never dead. similar cards we've seen. It, it, it's the backside if it's truly dead, dead right? Yeah, yeah like, like, like you have the backside. That's the thing. You can if you have multiples, it's legendary. That would normally suck if you had multiple I, gods, right? But now you have this one I mean, drop throne that you just drop on the board and it feeds into the second copy. The backside's not great against Leyland of the Void either, though. Oh, okay, okay, you're right. You're <laughs> right. You're right. You're right. Or something. <laughs> you're right. This card is not good against those cards, right? But you know, it's okay. You can feed the swarm now. <laughs> so, so yeah. I, I mean, in the context of standard, that backside is good, right? Yeah, like, if you right. haven't oh. managed to fill your graveyard, right, uh, then you can just use the backside as a way out of it. But yeah. three and mana, six, like six, Castle just Queen. two cards a turn isn't, isn't much. Like, I, I don't know, man. And then if you it, can't it do it, then you just draw a card. Like, <laughs> I, 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 and I, I think we're all sleeping on that part, by the way. That text that says death touch there, I think I think that that's that's major because isn't there something that helps death touch this set? Yeah, you, you can get some poison yeah, counters you out of can. it. <laughs> Look out, poison two. That's it. That's I thought infect. It's back on the menu. <laughs> I thought the death touch was mostly for flavor. Like normally your six sixes having death touch isn't too too powerful, but it is a god of death, so it obviously has to have death touch. I do think the backside's actually pretty effective in standard, and I like how they synergize together, and we still have Demonic Embrace in the format, and that seems... <laughs> remember when we were, like, throwing Demonic Embraces on Regisaurs? Like, yeah. you can do the same thing, and the throne mills over the Demonic Embrace for you, and play your Mire Tritons and stuff, so uh, I don't think this card's, like, broken which is weird to say about a three mana six six but i do think uh, that you could build a pretty good deck around it in standard yeah, I think okay this card is you powerful. forgot the number one thing which is embercleave is legal okay and death touch is super relevant when yep. you have trample and double strike right this is like almost a one shot it's like regisaur <laughs> but like it just comes with death touch and then death touch is relevant because all creatures nowadays are six sixes right like you you don't play that many fair creatures, Seth, but this is actually quite relevant where they have like seven sevens or they have a six six with a counter on it or something and your six six can't battle it out. Like the death touch is relevant, but yeah. Embercleave, my friend, like, oh my gosh, right? <laughs> Embercleave. <laughs> And this is one of, like, five cards from the entire set that actually can get through a Lovestruck Beast, so <laughs> so it's got that going for it. <laughs> That's the new bar, the, the Lovestruck Beast test. It's not the Doomblade test anymore, yeah. the Lovestruck Beast. Can you oh, attack it really a three-drop? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tarmogoyf is really dead, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Wait till I get, someone plays this like we need modern, I'm like, come on, dude. <laughs> They're gonna they're gonna curve into that. They're gonna foretell it's gonna be the board wipe you love, and then they're gonna play this on three because they don't care. It's, it's it's not even the old god that's an enchantment. So if you like thought season, yeah. you can grow your goyf big enough. This is just a creature. You're like this is useless. My goyf is a four or five. <laughs> you're exiling cards from your graveyard, shrinking my goyf every turn. Come on, dude. Uh, in search of greatness. Green, green, enchantment. It's a rare. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may cast a permanent spell from your hand with converted mana cost equal to one plus the highest converted mana cost among other permanents you control without paying its mana cost if you don't scry one. I, I can't tell if this is terribly just win more because <laughs> you're already, you know, doing a silly amount of things or it, or if this needs to be banned. I think this card for me... Every time I read it, when I first read it, I was like, whoa, that's like Fires of Invention, Mana Doubler, that's going to be insane. And then every time I read it, I noticed something else in that huge wall of text that made it worse. And now I think it's close to unplayable, maybe like combo, like Allosaurus Rider into Grizzlebrand or something like that would make it worth it. But I actually think that it's pretty bad, or at least pretty safe. So maybe there's some like 
Neoform combo that makes it bannably good, but I don't think it's actually a very good card. It doesn't see itself on the battlefield, so you can't just play this, put a three drop into play for free the next turn, and it only triggers on your highest converted mana cost, so you can't really do the ether vial trick where you like play a bunch of two drops and set this on two and just two drop, two drop, two drop every single turn or three drop, three drop, three drop because it only sees your highest CMC permanent. So sure, you put your Love Strike Beast into play, but then you have to have like exactly Questing Beast or another four drop. And then after that, you have to have exactly the five drop. So there's going to be games when this is like absurd and you get like 15 free man out of it and just run away with it. But I think a huge percentage of the time it's going to be scry one and i don't think that's enough to really make it broken but what if i go valky and then i make it tybalt <laughs> can i do that <laughs> Ooh, wait no. no i don't think it does that actually i don't, I, I don't think yeah i don't i don't think you could valky the tybalt <laughs> oh this card sucks wait can you with converted mana cost the converted mana cost of the card is the front side right yeah but i i think that would restrict you to casting the front side but why can't I cascade it but not do this? Oh, this, this is just so complicated. <laughs> yeah, the, the rules around stuff like that is is very, very wonky. <laughs> okay, we, we're going we're gonna to have to uh, ask a judge on this. But I, even if you could, I don't know that this makes that makes this card good. Jund, Richard. <laughs> Jund in standard. Door. Back on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. is it good with Tarmogoyf, Richard? You can sack it to get... Tireless tracker and I, value them out. I, I, I can get the new Tarmogoyf, the god of death, <laughs> from my actual Tarmogoyf. <laughs> yes. Um, you, you, you can get you, you can get Stranger Root guys, and when they kill it, you still have a Stranger oh Root guys. God. So you can still get. Oh boy, three drops. <laughs> Look for at days. that! Oh. Look at that! You play <laughs> Lurus, and then you can bring it back. Oh, you see then. Tarmogoyf is infinite, along with Strangle Root, guys, if you play with Lurus. You guys laugh, but I, I am writing a letter to Wizards every day, and soon enough, we're going to have Tarmogoyf remastered, okay? <laughs> we're going to be like, Uro is nothing. We're going to have like an Oko Uro abomination that's like Nissa somehow. It's going to be like a two mana 8-8 eight eight that doubles your mana on ETB. <laughs> Wheels, like plague winds. And your opponent right? and the can't downside, draw cards. The, the, the downside is like, it's it's two colors. It's three colors. It's exactly the Jund colors. That's the downside. No, it's cumulative upkeep where you pay one life. <laughs> and, that, and and then Jund would be back to winning 49% of the time. <laughs> you got to use tight play to get to 50, okay? <laughs> All right. Jord, God of Winter. Two and a green, three, three, legendary snow creature god. When Jorn attacks, untap each snow permanent you control. The backside is Cauldring, the Rhyme Staff, one blue and a black. Legendary Snow Artifact, tap. You may play target snow permanent card from your graveyard this turn. If you do, it enters tapped. So is this card good? When I saw this, I was like, meh, like, how am I going to keep attacking with my 3-3 to untap? Like, sure, if I get to, that's probably really great. Uh, but then I saw a lot of other people like, whoa, this is so insane. It's so good. Where do you guys come down on this? Am I am I missing it on this one? And it's actually way more powerful than I thought it was? I think it is not that good. Uh, yeah, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I think it's like hilarious if I get to pull off some sweet janky combos, but it has to attack. Like why why yeah, it's a three, that's, three. that's the biggest thing about it. It has to attack. Now, if I'm gonna play anything, it's the backside. And not because it's in Demir colors. I'm <laughs> I'm talking about like, yeah, like you may play target snow permanent card from your graveyard this turn. If you do, it enters the battlefield tapped. That's the thing that I'd care more about. You, is it Jorn or Yorn, by the way? I think it's okay. If it's Jorn oh, it is Yorn. Okay, okay. No, Jorn. it's Yorn. Okay. It should be Yorn, right? Okay. I have no idea. Sure. Seth, Seth what, what's yeah. the pronunciation? <laughs> uh, I, I've been saying Jorn, so I'm sure it's I'm sure it's Yorn. Okay. So Yorn <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we cover our bases. Yorn is is just I don't know it. It seems like right now maybe I'm missing the bigger picture. The front half just doesn't seem that great to me. It that's, depends that's if the meta right. has creatures or not. If it has creatures, which it most likely will, you can't successfully attack right because the the bar is like a six six or a five <laughs> yeah. five Love or a four beast. four. <laughs> like you just can't attack through anything. So it's. Utterly useless. But, if but, you can attack, however, because everyone is playing Crim decks, then <laughs> well, then they would be playing like three, three mana, mana board Nissa, wipes, right? Yeah, <laughs> that is true. I, it's three mana, I will Nissa, say, double your mana, right? Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, if you can keep attacking with it, it does essentially double up your mana. I will say I'm a little higher on it now than when it first came out because, not because I think it's great, but because we've seen more pieces of there being like a Saltai snow deck, and we've seen like a graveyard sub theme with like three seasons, uh, the uncommon lord that can come back from the graveyard for three snow mana. So, I'm a little higher on the fact that maybe we'll have, like, an actual snow, like, Saltai Snow Tribal deck, and if we do, the backside seems really sweet in that deck as, like, a repeatable Eternal Witness or whatever. Uh, so I think it could show up if a snow deck's good. When it first came out, I was like, I don't know if there's going to be enough for snow to be an actual thing, but now I think we've seen enough pieces where people can at least play Saltai Snow in Standard. Will it be, like, Tier 1? I have absolutely no idea, but there's enough pieces to make a full-on snow deck work now. I, I mean, I don't know if I if if snow becomes that popular and red is in the format, I can't imagine a world where we're not playing snowball. We played whatever the the origins version of like you know where it, oh fiery impulse. yeah we yeah. played that right if now yeah. if red is popular and we're just gonna assume that snow is gonna be everywhere, so it's always gonna deal the damage that you want it to deal. Like is is it is it three damage or is it two damage? I think I can't remember. It's, it's two and then three if you have three snow permanents. Great news. So yeah, like that that I feel like I don't want to trade my one mana or my three mana threat into a one mana answer, but dies to Doomblade is not a good reason. So however I <laughs> dies to Love Struck Beast yeah. is my bigger goal. Like how do you <laughs> get through Love Struck Beast with this card? It can't attack. That's my big thing. It just can't attack. I don't I don't know where where it's attacking. Like, you're either swinging, like you had mentioned, into a bigger creature or into a three-mana board wipe. So. <laughs> Commander, though. Commander. Oh. I think this is a sweet card. Because then you can attack whoever is open, and the backside seems really good. So I, I could definitely yeah. see myself playing this in Sultai Commander deck. Do you think there is a chance that they, in the last bitch, uh, like, bit, bit of cards, right? Like, like that there's going to be any, I don't know. Thing that ter- like kind of like arcane adaptation, but for everything snow. Ooh, I am leaning towards no, and I kind of hope that there isn't. I don't know. Maybe it's fine if it's like if it is literally arcane adaptation, and it's not like a competitive card, and it's more of a fun card. Then go for it. But I don't know if I'd want that to be a competitive card. Because if there if there is and turns everything, but it's like you know both players have everything snow. That would be kind of interesting, but I'd, I'd guess then I, w- I would look into whatever that the white hate card is because then everything enters. Yeah, the- <laughs> Redain's back on the yeah. menu. <laughs> Redain then becomes, you know, the truth. But until You then- need a two-card combo to get a Thalia? Is, like, what, is that <laughs> really what, you, what are we doing here? <laughs> All right, next up, we have the Raven's Warning. One white and a blue create a 1-1. One, one, oh, it's a saga. Uh, the first step is create a 1-1 one, one blue bird creature token with flying. You gain two life. Two, whenever one or more creatures you control with flying deal combat damage to a player, look at that player's hand and draw a card. Three, you may put a card you own from outside the game on top of your library. Well, I I really like this card. I mean, you get kind of an overcost token into a Gitaxian probe, into a slow Masterminds acquisition or Fae of Wishes, uh, slow because it goes to the top of your deck. For three mana, that seems like a pretty reasonable deal like uh i mean yeah i i don't know exactly where it fits but it seems decent i think that if this card exists it might exist with nico eris however uh this card still seems like nico eris is infinitely better than this this card kind of just seems meh to me i don't i don't see the appeal in it i, I think this is bold really oh 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 i'm just not agreeing what, with you what guys about today. single scoops world Grim? because Sing- single scoops then you get a sideboard is that does that make it go up in uh, in value no, I, mean, I, I have fey of wishes because the thing here is fey of wishes <laughs> can come down on turn two as a blocker as a one four blocker and that that's that true. is way more valuable than a three mana one one but, bird but what if you want to get a carnage tire from your side i would never Grim? want to do that so i don't know <laughs> why that would be <laughs> that, that, that part is just out of the cards for me so <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't know, and because like the thing is, it doesn't even put it into my hand. That's the big thing, right? Like this card puts it on top of your library. Yeah, well, it costs you a card, right? But you do get it on the third turn because you're gonna draw it during that turn. But Fae of Wishes will rotate eventually, right? Right, right. This thing bounces. You can Yori in it. You can and 
And Saga's trigger after your draw step, by right, the way. So, so you'll get it the following turn. Oh, wait, so you do gotta the trigger's after your draw step? Hmm. Oh, sagas are so weird. Yeah. So you do you have to like opt or use a shard token if you want it right away, or you get it the next turn. So it is a little slow. And that that can be a problem, right? Like Because Fae of Wishes, you can top deck it, and then that's good, right? And then, of course, in the early game against aggro decks, I can drop it as a 1-4. So at the same time, like... Uh, you're going to have all your mana available, which is nice. Like, how often, I guess in the late game it's relevant, but how often can you pay for for Fey of Wishes and then cast a Ugin or a five mana Wrath or something? That's a lot of mana to do all in one turn. So a lot of times you're kind of like waiting a turn anyway when you Fey of Wishes, unless it's like the late game. So maybe it's not as big of a drawback as it looks. I, I, I value the one for flying body a little bit more, personally. So I, because I, I, and the ability to bounce it back to your hand and use it again later as, you know, a, a way to tutor is pretty good. Like it, the, I, I really like that over this saga at least. It, I really yeah. love the synergy that you get the peak to inform your tutoring. So you get the like Gitaxian probe, mm-hmm. and then you can use that to get the right card from your sideboard. So I really love the design of this card, and I don't think it's bad, but I don't know if I think it's like staple level good. But what did you think, Richard? Do you like this one? Mm, I thought it was pretty good, but Krim has convinced me. I I, <laughs> I, I play a lot of Fae of Wishes. I agree. Like most of the time, you're playing it as a one four, so stabilize, and then later on, you just continually use it to win the game. So I think there's merit to that. So I, yeah, I do think it's outclassed currently, but Fae of Wishes has to rotate sometime, right? So yeah. th- then you get this. I-, I do think the wishing aspect is super strong, right? Like cards that wish are really strong, especially uh, in Singleton, or not Singleton, best of one formats, uh, super strong there. Uh, so I do think this card will see a lot of play eventually, uh, assuming we don't have some like crazy synergies with it, which we might already do with Nico Eris and, and things like that. Uh, so... Maybe. Yeah, but I think Krim is I don't, I don't, to me. I don't want to bounce my token <laughs> back to my hand, so. <laughs> uh, okay, next up, we have Burning Rune Demon, 4 Black Black, 6 CMC, 6-6, six, six, Mythic. It's a creature, Demon Berserker, flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for exactly two cards not named Burning Rune Demon that have different names. If you do, reveal those cards. An opponent chooses one of them, put the chosen card into your hand and the other into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. So I, I, I know that I pushed for this to be on the list today because first off, let let this card to me is one mana cheaper than Rune Scar Demon. Same stats, does everything that I wanted to do. And let's be honest here, g- putting it into the graveyard, is that a downside or is that essentially my second hand? <laughs> right, like, like I'm talking about in Commander. This is not something you're gonna yeah. see me play in Standard because I'll, I will lose well before I cast this uh, if I do that. <laughs> <laughs> I will die on the spot if I try to cast this in any non, like you know, Commander format. However, I put this on here because I think this card is so cool in Commander. I, th- th- this this is a six six body combined with Final Parting. Yeah, I, I think in Commander that it's probably just better than Rune Scar Demon. Uh, I think if you build your deck properly. It's a mana cheaper, and you still should get the card that you want every time either you, like, you do a lot of the the Gifts Ungiven tricks. Like, you get the card plus a Eternal Witness or a Snapcaster or something like that, and then you know you're getting it. Or you just get two cards that are essentially the same. Like, if you get Damnation and Toxic Deluge, you get a Wrath either way. So I think I would probably prefer this to Runescar Demon in my Commander decks. Well, also at the same time, in Commander, you want a little bit of redundancy, right? So why not play both? Yeah, I mean, no, you definitely definitely can play both together too, and uh, it's a demon for you. Yeah. Grim. you bring back some demon tribal action. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, whenever there's a new <laughs> demon, this set has already given me like two to three. So I I will tell you that I, I think this card is an amazing commander card because it's also fun. Uh, it, you know, you get to like do the whole here you go, like make me make some politic deals. I mean, of course, you know how many people should make deals with demons probably none but like <laughs> <laughs> liliana my friend exactly I, I will say there's some flavor feel what exactly is berserker about this card it's got <laughs> like, the uh it's the jujutsu kaisen glowing marks on them jujutsu kaisen <laughs> oh. for those that you know like for, for seth it's an anime yeah it's an anime <laughs> Oh, an okay. Answer. That makes that makes sense. <laughs> he needs menace, at least menace. Okay. Does he need menace? <laughs> I, 
I feel like they just tack Berserker onto random cards. It's is not there a anything Berserker that actually, anyway, right? Yeah, it, it should be like a six like, two or something. If you want, like a twelve two. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, it's kind of through the whole set though. It's like it's like. <laughs> it's like allies in <laughs> our return to Zedekar. Like, eh, Berserker, no Berserker. Who knows? Just throw it on there. I mean, I all think right. the, the glowing, or like, it looks angry and it has, that, that's it. That's all I got. It's angry. But, but that's only in the art. <laughs> oh, hmm. I know one thing that Wizards did say is that Berserker was kind of like a replacement for Viking. Because they thought about using Viking, but decided that they would go with, uh, like, Berserker instead. So maybe that's what we're supposed to be getting, is, like, the, the, the Viking Raidery type feel from the cards that have Berserker on them. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's from the art, you get that. But it's basically another ally, right? You just tack it on and claim <laughs> yeah. it's from the set. Could have been in Strixhaven. Could have been, could have been a wizard. Oh. Decided <laughs> it's a Berserker today. I don't care. It has this <laughs> relevant type demon, so... <laughs> Uh, all right, last card, last card. We're going long. Graven Lore, three white, uh, three blue, blue. So five CMC. It's a snow instant. Scry X, where X is the amount of snow mana spent to cast a spell, then draw three cards. I love this card. It's so good. I I think this card. Okay, I mean, it, it plays right in a mystical dispute, but at some point, that's gonna get that's gonna have to rotate. <laughs> <laughs> but but this card is so much better than like you know precognitive perception because that you can only get the scry if you use you know you triggered addendum. This is you know if you use like you know whatever snow sources you use, that's how much you scry, and that to and then you draw three cards. So this could potentially be scry five, draw three at instant speed. Is yeah, I mean. I think it's I think it's definitely powerful. It reminds me I mean, I think the thing is that the floor of just instant speed five mana draw three, that's already playable ish, or uh, might even just be playable in standard in a lot of standard formats. We'll see, like things keep getting more and more powerful. I don't know. Maybe we're past the point, but I feel like that's already playable. And then the scrying is a pretty meaningful bonus. So I think this is a very playable card. It I mean, I don't really know what you do with it other than just stick it in your control deck and refill your hand at instant speed uh, but Correct. but yeah i mean it seems very playable to me that's exactly what's, what it's here for <laughs> what's the largest amount of scry we, we we've gotten on a five mana draw three instant uh um well so uh, none three. i three. i i think but remember what was the it's, it's, what was the draw th- the scry three one uh, pre- precognitive perception but it had to be triggering but, addendum yeah, so you had to cast it as a sorcery to actually get the scry out of right. it. Yeah, so but, this is, like, hmm. strictly, strictly better. Like, the game, I feel the game is over when you cast this, right? Like, you get to look, like, five cards deep, assuming you're playing all Snowlands, right? You look five cards deep, and then an additional three, so it's eight. It's like a dig-through time that you're just firing off. Like, the game is over yeah. if you cast this and you're not, like, on the verge of death, right? Like, there's no way you're going to come back. So I think this card is actually really strong. Yeah. The question the question is, where does it fit? That was my question for this card. Like, the one control is just, uh, deck is rogues, and they have into the story, which is, I think, just better if you can cast it for four mana, you get an extra card out of it. Is so it I right? think that's my only concern is, like, I think it is. I, like that, that's I think, the thing I, I was thinking about. Like that, like you know, like the the only thing this could compare to for the current decks. Uh, well, there, there's still the blue, black, and blue, white control decks, by the way, that definitely will welcome this card. Uh, but rogues specifically, maybe not rogues, but even then, you know, you have. I, I guess if you're not, if that thing isn't four mana, your deck hasn't done what it's wanted to do. So. Uh, like yeah, like I think Graven Lore is gonna be used more so in those decks of so the blue black control with Yorion, um, the the blue white control decks with Yorion. So those are the decks that are gonna want this, like the decks that I really enjoy playing, the Land Go decks. <laughs> I I I definitely agree with that. If we see those decks kind of like rise up and become real things, it'll probably be at least in part because Graven Lore is uh, is fueling them. All right. I think that brings us to the end of all the cards we wanted to talk about. There are still many, many cards. We can't cover them all. Uh, Check out mtgpreviews.com for all the cards. Uh, Later this week, Wizards will be releasing all the cards, uh, the rest of the set. Uh, Official previews end tomorrow, I believe. And then we have the Commander pre-cons for Kaldime. So yeah, this week should wrap up Kaldime. And then Kaldime releases on the 28th of January, so next week. Uh, so yeah 
And I believe that that brings us to the end of episode 312 of the MTG Goldfish podcast. So no fish mail this week, but still get in your questions. Richard, uh, if people want to fish mail us for next week, where should they send them? Send them directly to Seth's inbox. No, <laughs> hashtag MTG fish mail. <laughs> on Twitter uh, at MTG Goldfish, and then uh, probably next week after we have completed the preview season, uh, we can go through everyone's questions from the last uh, two or three weeks or so. Sweet. So send in the fish mail, uh, Richard Grimm. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks to everyone for listening. Thanks to Card Conduit for supporting the show, and we will be back next week to talk about. Eh, more cow time and whatever else goes on in the world of magic so until then have a great week everyone and this is the crew signing out